Don, let's talk about Equinix and how they fit into this picture. A uh, key uh, capability as these folks move to the cloud, continue in these hybrid environments, et cetera. Give us the top line state of the state. Yeah, thanks, Luke. And, and I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, participate in this event. Got a, got a great distinguished panel here. Um, is, um, it, it's been a, it's been an interesting journey. Um, I have a, a unique privilege of a, of a broad purview of a lot of um, agencies who have been methodically uh, executing their respective digital modernization initiatives. Um, and they, and they vary obviously in, in, in some degree from one to the other. But they all share uh, a number of, of different common um, challenges and objectives. Um, so I, I have had the privilege of serving my current role, uh, supporting the vast majority of our public sector business here at Equinix for over a decade, for about 11 years now. And so um, just a lot of great success stories um, uh, that, that I could speak of <laughs> with a number of the uh, um, panelists here, uh, these agencies. Um, custom border protection, uh, for one, I can, I can speak out, uh, they were really the trailblazers for Homeland Security, um, you know, inside it, just inside of 10 years ago, worked with their teams, uh, who really had a solid game plan. And it all really begins with, um, you know, application rationalization, looking at what you've done, um, you know, uh, you know, from a legacy perspective and how you rationalize that into, um, sort of a, a, a cloud type environment. Um, uh, great, great success story there. The Navy has also done some incredible things that are actively um, executing their their uh, their initiative as well. For those who who don't have uh, complete familiarity and and why um, or who we are and 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 what purpose we serve or our charter in the industry, so it's it's a unique place. Equinix. Um, you know, began um, as the sort of meeting place for the telcos back in the late 90s to, to start building the Internet. Um, things really changed significantly as uh, the cloud providers began to gravitate to Equinix and instantiate um, an edge presence here. Um, that has has, has uh, accelerated significantly over the last decade. Um, but the important point uh, to, to raise here is that uh, in that process, these cloud providers um, effectively uh, forced us to up our game in the interconnection um, business. And so that's really our focus today. We're the world's largest data center provider, um, but, but our real focus is interconnection and, and fostering and curating um, you know, uh, a provider neutral uh, digital ecosystem, a digital marketplace, if you will. Um, and so now uh, in 2024, the vast majority of these digital service providers uh, have opted in to permanently SD and enable and API integrate their respective offerings and uh, global backbone networks for that matter into our um, underlying um, globally deployed um, SD and enabled fabric, uh, which is which creates this uh, digital um, infrastructure um, that enables, um, you know, it, 10,000 plus customers at Equinix to, uh, within a few minutes, stitch together um, hybrid multi-cloud architectures. Uh, a plethora of agencies have taken advantage of this. So I will just say in, in, uh, in wrapping up my point, um, th there's been tremendous progress in cloud adoption, uh, hybrid multi-cloud adoption. Um, but I also, uh, you know, I'm happy to announce that uh, a lot of these agencies have also found uh, extended utility with this interconnection play and being able to uh, logically extend their respective agency boundaries into a place like Equinix and begin to collaborate and establish communities of interest, uh, whether it be federal health care, federal finance, federal law enforcement, and so forth, and the DOD realm as well. So there's, there's yeah. a lot of connectivity. And who would have known that 